Hey everyone, it's Harry from Step Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. The holiday season is upon us already and uh, in my prior video, I showed you guys how to make a centerpiece duck for your holidays and that was a smoked duck with a orange barbecue sauce. It was so simple, 90 minutes, just three ingredients, but in today's episode, we're going to take it up a notch. We're going to take you all the way to China, going back about 600 years to the days when Peking duck was invented. At one point in time, it was only reserved for the emperor. And if you were emperor, you were the only ones who could eat Peking duck. But today, Peking duck is popular all over the world. It's not that easy to make because there are quite a few steps. But what I've done for you is I've simplified these steps so you can recreate it in your home using your Weber kettle. Obviously, you need a duck. Uh, this is a whole duck with the head and feet on. You need to be able to use a marinade, which is comprised of four ingredients, some brown sugar, some hoisin, five spice powder and some barbecue rub or you can replace this with salt you need some aromatics uh, we are using a previously charred green onions uh, charred uh, ginger and some star anise and then you need a scalding liquid which is the secret to picking duck skin you have some honey uh, some vinegar and this secret ingredient called maltose. Maltose is a kind of uh, sugar. It's not very sweet, but what it does, it has a caramelization temperature of 325 degrees. This is the secret for the Peking duck because this will allow the Peking duck to have that beautiful mahogany color. So just four basic components, the duck marinade, the aromatics to stuff the, the inside the duck, and then the scalding liquid. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to let the duck sit in the refrigerator for a few days to dry out the skin so it becomes nice and crispy. You begin with a completely thawed the duck. You remove the uh, liver and then the uh, heart from it. This you can save to make a duck stock. What well, first thing you want to do is you want to cut up the legs here. So use a pair of shears. This one also is good for stock. Okay, and then uh, on this side, if you flip it over, the wings are tucked in. So you want to just remove the wing right at the joint here so that pieces here can be used as a stock. We, we don't usually use this part when we make peking duck. Cut the bone, cut it off here. So same thing on this side, so the joint, so. All right, so we have the duck here. The first thing we want to do is, this is a uh, six pound duck. Remove the leg and the wing tips and then next thing you want to do is we want to separate the skin carefully using our hands. Typically, this is done uh, with a compressor. So what they do is they put the compressor into the neck and then they, they blow it in and then the whole duck pops up. But like if you're like me, you don't have a compressor handy. So we'll do it the old fashioned way with a knife and we'll use a pair of uh, scissors to try to kind of work our way underneath the skin. So you can see the skin sits on top of the meat. So all you need to do is take your finger and run it here. Kind of like work your finger into the skin to separate the skin from the meat like so. So you just take the gentle and eventually all the skin will separate just like that. It's kind of pulling membrane from the ribs. So if you're a pit master, you, if you're like me, we pull a lot of membranes, thousands of ribs. So this is not that hard, much harder than that. And uh, if you have an air compressor, obviously it's a lot easier. Uh, you can watch in the YouTube videos, uh, the most of the restaurants, they use an air compressor because this is just too labor intensive. I didn't want to go spend $700 for an air compressor. So I, I use the old fashioned method. I only cook duck a few times a year. So this method will be fine. We're going to push the skin all the way through like that and uh, separate the skin. Instead of using a compressor, I'm using my hands. So just a little bit of effort in TLC. Just be gentle, don't try to do too much. So you can make sure you don't puncture the skin. You want the skin intact, but you do want to make sure that you work your way in so you can separate the skin. So look at that, see? My fingers beneath. I'm separating the skin from the meat itself, going and doing all over the duck. So just a little bit of time, a little massage, as my British friends would say. 
And it's actually quite therapeutic to be able to do this because uh, it's a lot of fun. And you get the satisfaction that you actually made a Peking duck, which is a, uh, you know, reserved for only emperors. So uh, this cannot be worse than devil meat. So for those of you who know what I'm talking about, who are competitors, you're used to trim chicken for three, four hours sometimes. So this will take maybe about 20 minutes or so. Fundamental technique number one, prepping the duck and separating the skin is done. Fundamental number two is preparing the marinade. I have brown sugar here, four tablespoons. Four tablespoons of hoisin sauce. So, and it's five spice powder. This one is, uh, you already buy it prepared. It's got things like uh, star anise, uh, cloves, fennel mixed in there. And a little bit of sabedetti rub for salt. If you don't have a sabedetti rub, just go ahead and use uh, any kind of a, like salt and pepper is fine. So this will work. All right, make a spice paste like that. And what happens is the spice paste, which is salty, will brine the uh, duck from inside out. So it'll uh, spread the salt from inside out. So it'll flavor the breast meat, the thigh meat, and the uh, back of the, uh, the backbone of the duck very nicely. So here's if you have it, spice paste. And you do not want to get any of this spice mix on the outside because the outside has to be pristine. I'm gonna put my hand in there and kind of rub it around inside, inside all the way to the front of the duck. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm gonna stuff the aromatics in there. So stuffing the aromatics also plumps up the breast of the duck so that you can get a more uh, kind of a uh, rounder shape for the breast meat itself. Put the ginger in also. So. Star anise. So this spice mixture will sit inside the duck because we're gonna show you guys how we do a spiral stitch on the back of the duck. Lock in all that goodness. Okay, so you go in, twist it over, out the other side. Twist around like so. Spiral twist, push out the other side, like so. Repeat the process again. Swing over this side, spiral stitch to this side, like so. Takes a little bit of patience and practice, but uh, if you do it slowly, you get the hang of it. It's not that hard to do. It seems intimidating when you first do it, but once you get the hang of it, it's kind of like knitting. Okay, now we can cut this back part off. Okay, so the duck is ready with the second phase. We uh, sewed it up and uh, it's ready to be blanched and scalded. In fundamental number four, we prepare the uh, scalding liquid to, to kind of blanch the duck. Uh, so this is the maltose, which is the secret ingredient to make sure that the duck comes out super golden brown and has crispy skin. Uh, maltose is a kind of sugar and it, it has a melting point, uh, caramelization point about 325 degrees. So we're gonna get it in, but you see, this is hard like glass. So a lot of people, when they hit this pot, they have no idea what to do with this. This is quite easily melted with the hot water. So I have a hot water bath here, Put some hot water here, kind of like let it uh, kind of uh, soften. So. and I can slowly work it now. So maltose, uh, kind of like candy, string candy, but it's not very sweet. Its primary purpose is essentially to allow the duck to crisp up and then to seal in the uh, juices when you cook the duck. So this is a ingredient not so common, uh, but this is absolutely essential ingredient. If you don't have maltose, uh, the next best thing is uh, you can use uh, some honey or some maple syrup. I'm gonna put some honey also in there, but the maltose is absolutely key. You can find this mostly in, a in Asian stores, and this whole tub is only like $1.50, so it's, it's not a very expensive item. I believe it's a byproduct of uh, making beer, uh, either malt or barley, uh, and I call um, barley sugar or something. But uh, you can see it melts quite readily when I uh, mix hot water in it. So, 
So we want to get maybe about, uh, I don't know, my half a cup of that. So you want to see that the liquid begins to color, uh, kind of light brown. I'm going to add a little bit of vinegar to it also. Just a little bit here. Make it acidic poaching liquid. And I'm using uh, white vinegar. The, the tra traditional vinegar they use is a, a red wine vinegar from China. I decided not to use that to keep it simple so you can replicate this recipe in your home kitchen. But if you can find uh, red vinegar, even better. And a little bit of honey. So, create a basting, a scalding liquid. Give the duck a little bath. That will essentially tighten up the skin, make it very silky and smooth. And then after that, the duck is ready for its uh, little nap in the refrigerator. Most places tend to leave the duck in the refrigerator to air dry at least overnight, if not five hours. Uh, I uh, will leave it in for a few days because uh, I have to leave town to work. So I'll be back in about three days. So we're going to let the duck get happy, happy, happy in the refrigerator. And... Uh, We'll kind of roast it when we come back. So fundamental number four is scalding. And the last fundamental is smoking the duck. We're going to use some uh, fruity, sweet woods such as peach and apple. And uh, we should be able to get the skin to crisp up. And I'll show you guys how it's eaten with some pancakes, some scallions, some cucumbers, and some hoisin. And how to prepare the duck so that you can slice it into apparently 100 different slices from one duck. I'm not sure I can have the skill to do that, but I'm going to try. So I'm going to add some more maltose, make the liquid brown. And you get, you're starting to get, starting to get soft on me. See like that, see it? And you can use about maybe half a tub of this stuff. And once the maltose is melted, we'll put a duck in, give it a little warm, Hot tub bath, get it covered with this maltose liquid and then let it sit in the refrigerator on a wire rack to dry out for a few days and then we're going to roast it or barbecue it in a pit with some sweet fruit wood. Alright, we're going to pick up the duck by the neck and carefully dip it in for the little bath. I think total soak time maybe about 2-3 minutes. See how, see how beautiful the skin looks? Look at, look at this side and look at this side that's been dipped. Look at how it smooths out here. Okay, you hold the duck by the neck and then you give it a little bath, like so. And you can see the skin begin to tighten up. This glaze will ensure that uh, after the skin dries out, it's gonna be beautiful, peaking duck mahogany color. That marinade that's uh, sealed into the cavity is going to permeate the duck with lots and lots of flavor as the duck sits and gets happy. And we'll let it sit on the wire rack to dry. Alright, the duck is beautifully blanched. Look at how shiny and smooth the skin has become with that hot liquid with the maltose, honey and vinegar. So time for Mr. Duck to take a nap for a few days to let the skin dry up in the refrigerator and sitting on a wire rack. I'm gonna set it on the bottom shelf of my refrigerator. Let it get happy and dry out for a few days so that the skin will become crispy when we cook it in the pit with some sweet fruit wood. We're ready to smoke the duck and uh, you want a sweet wood to smoke duck so we use peach and apple and uh, we are going to put it in the Weber kettle. Alright, we set it down right in the middle, the Weber kettle. I have a hot zone on the left and also on the right of the kettle, like so. And uh, we're gonna put the duck in there and let it roast at around 350 degrees with a little bit of apple wood and peach wood. And it should be ready in about an hour or so. Time to spray again. It's developing a nice color. So I mentioned that I have the fire on the left and on the right, and there's a drip pan in the middle to kind of catch a duck fat. Beans, well, you're looking for scraps? There's no food right now, okay? Maybe when I finish cooking the duck, I'll get, let you taste a piece. Let's see how the duck is doing. Alright, looking nice and golden brown. 169, 170. 189, 75, 181, I think it's done. 
take it out and let it rest. Looks beautiful. The duck has rested. I'm ready to carve it up now. I have uh, the traditional Peking duck sides prepared. We have some uh, scallions, which are green onions sliced here, hoisin sauce, and some uh, cucumber slivers, and uh, some uh, Chinese pancakes. So typically, the duck skin is placed in the pancake with a little bit of hoisin sauce and some garnish. So you get the flavor of the duck skin, the duck meat, the crunchy vegetables, and that salty sweet sauce. So we're going to plate up the duck. I also have a special knife here, which I purchased on Amazon. I'll leave the link in the description. This is actually a Mercier uh, German uh, NSF certified duck slicer. So I never knew that there was a duck slicer. I was doing an uh, internet uh, search for a knife. Uh, I found this one. So I you know, actually bought the knife because I have the duck. So you know me, I like equipment. So I'm going to use an actual authentic uh, duck slicer designed by Mercier in Germany. But I think it's made in Taiwan. But this is a great tool. It's super sharp and the skin is really crispy. I'm gonna slice the duck next. The traditional way of serving a duck actually is to make it into about 120 different slices. This is done when you eat it in a uh, high-end duck restaurant, but I'm not a duck expert, so I'm not sure I can get 120 slices up from this duck, but uh, I'm gonna give it a shot and see how it goes. First thing you wanna do is uh, you wanna make a careful incision at the base where the uh, marinade was uh, Kind of sewn in and you make a cut here and drain out all that wonderful liquid from the marinade and from the uh, ginger and the green onions that we put in there earlier drain out the liquid here and if possible remove the bamboo skewer that we use to sew it together and here comes the ginger and all the other stuff first cut is going to cut off the butt like so i think the way they do it is they slice it this way into 120 small slices. You can do that right now. See the skin is very crispy. This side, a little bit, little bit of duck meat, and a little bit of the crispy skin. Slice my way through the duck. So the uh, best skin actually comes from the backbone because the skin is thinner, the fat is uh, less thick versus the breast. So the connoisseurs who eat picking duck. Uh, the, the part of the duck that they really want to try as far as the skin goes is actually uh, the wrong place It's actually on the other backbone, which is where I'm slicing. That's why I have my duck facing this way Skin here is super thin less fat. So it, it's really really crispy. All right, so I got some skin now I'm gonna get some meat so we can eat the duck with the skin and the meat All right, so here's how you eat uh, the picking duck uh, this, uh, you start with a little bit of a uh, pancake, uh, and you can make these yourself, but I found it easier to buy frozen ones and just cook them. You take a piece of duck, you dip it in the hoisin sauce like so, and then you kind of butter your pancake with it. So, green onion on it, cucumber for the uh, texture and crunch, and let's see how it tastes. Like Roll it up into a little tortilla, and you just pop it in your mouth, and let's see how it tastes like. The taste is absolutely fantastic. Uh, there's something about the texture of that crispy skin, the uh, gaminess of the duck meat, and a little bit of the smoke that we got from the pit, cooking it in peach and apple wood. That uh, marinade that we put on the inside has permeated the meat so that even the meat up here, you can taste the flavor of some of those five spice powder, the hoisin, some of the ginger aromatics that went into the uh, dish. And then the hoisin has a little bit of a kind of a sweet, salty flavor. But then when you have the cucumber crunch and then the slightly pungent, oniony flavor of the uh, scallions and that whole bite, that's absolutely amazing. Now I know why the empress 600 years ago devised this recipe. And uh, for many years, only if you are royalty and emperor can you enjoy picking duck. But... Uh, today, I had a chance to cook Peking duck and uh, I showed you how to break it down into five fundamentals so it's not that hard. So you should be able to pull this off for your special occasion. So I wanted to also take the opportunity to wish you guys a happy holidays, uh, Merry Christmas, uh, Hanukkah, and Happy New Year. Uh, this episode will be probably one of my last videos of the year. Plenty more videos coming in 2019, so please stay tuned to my channel. Like, subscribe, and share. And uh, remember, I have a Patreon site. Also, I put out a t-shirt link for all my 
uh, viewers who want to get t-shirts for the holidays. So until next time, it's Doug Love from Harry from Los Angeles. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.